So today I'm going to be showing you the voltage controlled oscillator or one of them from the modular analog synthesizer that I constructed. This is the simpler of the two oscillators uh, having slightly less features even though they both kind of do the same thing. Uh, it is wire wrapped, wire wrapped circuit design. I'll show you what that is in a minute. Um, first I constructed it on cardboard then migrated over to metal once I had the metal panels ready and um, it's you know not my design it's uh, Imfos design my music from outer space it's a, it's a website this guy named Ray Wilson it's like has like a, a gold mine of information there you can check it out if you if you're interested in synthesizers first off I'm gonna go through and show you uh, the features of this thing uh, like kinda what it can do and uh, in this video clip here, I'm going to have an LFO drive the VCO through its various control voltage inputs. Going through the different waveforms here. Um, on the square wave output, there is a pulse width um, setting. So you can set how wide the, the square wave is, like the duty cycle. It's almost like another uh, frequency input like if you put an LFO into it you can modulate it as well um, or you can do it manually you can get some pretty cool sounds out of it it sounds like there's another oscillator in it when you do that of the wave feeding it will st will st force the oscillator to start on that edge so there's sync and then i have another vco that has a hard sync and they both do the same thing but they sound a little different basically it accentuates the harmonics of the input waveform Hear the harm, you hear the tonic and then each harmonic of that waveform, so it's, it's a pretty cool effect. Okay, so I'm gonna go run through the schematic and I will show you step by step how this thing works. So basically, you start out with um, a master oscillator that drives all the other waveforms, basically. There's like waveform shaping circuitry down the line that makes all the different waveforms, but the master oscillator makes a ramp wave. And that ramp wave uh, is formed by two op amps, one in a configuration that makes a linear increasing voltage. And then when that voltage reaches a certain point, it's fed back to another op amp with a JFET in its feedback loop, which drops it off immediately and it does that repeatedly in an oscillatory manner and it's voltage controlled and that voltage comes from a scaling amplifier which takes in the uh, control voltage inputs so that that's how you can like plug in a keyboard and have it control this oscillator and give you the right notes and the way it does that is it basically has a summing amplifier with a temperature compensated resistor that's supposed to bond with the two transistors down, down the line there, which I kind of didn't do. And that makes a logarithmic amplifier. The second op amp there is a logarithmic amplifier, or it's an exponential one of the two, basically it makes it so that you get one volt per octave, so you can cram five octaves into five volts. 
Um, and then on the you have a linear input as well on on the end of your of the second scaling amplifier there, the logarithmic amplifier. And so that voltage uh, is then fed to the JFET and first stop amp of the master oscillator. And then you also have your sync input on that second oscillator or that second op amp in the oscillator as well, which tells the master oscillator uh, when to sort of start the waveform, when to like reclock it. Well, you know, regardless of the of what the uh, VCO is actually doing, whatever whatever the voltage is. And then, of course, in that summing amplifier as well, you have your fine and your coarse knob adjustments. You can, you know, of course, manually adjust your frequency. And then the second page of the schematic, we basically have the waveform shaping circuitry where you have, first of all, you get your triangle wave, the raw, the circle with the raw in it, that is the, that's the ramp going into the stage there. There's a offset trim on every single one of these, so you can set the uh, output so that the zero point is actually at zero volts and not offset by some DC offset. It basically takes the ramp and turns it into a triangle, and that triangle is then fed into a, a single op amp stage, which is basically in the form of a Schmidt trigger. But that Schmidt trigger is has a variable threshold and so you can you can adjust the duty cycle of the square wave uh, by adjusting where the threshold begins and so the triangle wave gets fed into it and the output will snap up or snap down depending on where the threshold is pretty ingenious circuit actually and then you have of course you have your ramp output which is basically a buffer of the the raw output but scaled so that you get uh, your proper impedance and your proper voltage. The output out of each of these outputs is around maybe 10 or 11 volts peak to peak on 15 volt rails. And then of course you have your sine wave output which has three different adjustment potentiometers because it's uh, a little difficult to set it up I guess and get it all the offset taken out and stuff. And there is a special op amp here called a transconductance op, op amp. There's like a constant current source looking thing on the output that's basically, it's a, it's a really easy way to adjust the output amplitude just by applying a voltage to it. They're very handy op amps, but they're a little pricey. But you'll see them in lots of the MFOS designs because they're just so versatile. And of course it was used here to control the sine wave output. That Darlington pair of transistors that's built into the chip as well for extra drive capability. Yeah, it looks a little complicated, but it's actually pretty simple when you break it down. And I tell you what, you get you begin to understand this circuit real good when you have to build it and then debug it yourself. I'll show you close-ups of the wire wrap circuitry. Uh, you know, this is this module was the first time I'd actually done anything with wire wrap that wasn't just like one little leg. So it was a little challenging at first, and I didn't know all the little quirks, but you know, all the other modules went together a lot smoother because of this one. As you can see in this picture, not all of the components have sockets, and that's a problem because wire app really only works good if you have sockets for everything, including integrated circuits and, well, everything. Um, it works really good in circuits that uh, there are a lot of integrated circuits in, like uh, back in the 80s, this is a viable technique to use on, like, computers because almost everything in there was a chip and so you just had to wire between the chips uh, but here there are a lot of chips but there's a lot of other components also and so I had to buy sockets for those and that was actually I'll admit a little pricey it all kind of adds up um, but once you kind of get a technique down it's not so bad it looks pretty hairy but it's actually easier to debug than if you would, were to solder them because you just destroy components, destroy your fingers, it would just be a nightmare. Every single module I built had to be debugged extensively. The only real issue with wire wrap I found was that you have you, you can't be tired when you're doing it. You have to be sharp, you have to be alert, because I found the times where I wasn't, I'd have to go through the next day and rip up everything I just did because it was not right. 
so it's a very tedious process. It took me months to wire all this together. Um, but if you're just doing like a single build, it's pretty viable because you can debug it, you can modify it, you can change it relatively easily. And compared to PCBs, it's cheaper, you know, for a single board. So um, definitely consider uh, if you're going to build a circuit like this.